Hello, I'm Brittany Gross, and I'm a senior in the MSU Dietetics Department, and I'm going to talk to you today about uh, acai berries. So, my interest in this topic came when uh, my mom started taking a juice, an acai berry juice, and she said that it made her feel better and she had more energy. And so I wanted to find out the um, science behind it and see if these claims had any um, scientific background. So what I found was um, in 2005, Dr. Perry Cohn appeared on Oprah and he endorsed these berries as a way of um, anti-aging. And ever since then, the popularity of them skyrocketed and I couldn't find any like exact numbers how popular they were or how much the market was worth, but um, they are still popular. Um, and the whole berry is actually not sold in America because it is so high in fat that it would go, it goes rancid within like a day or two. So um, it's only sold here in capsules, tablets, and in juices. So some of the health claims with the acai berry is that it's an antioxidant. So that means that it would um, reduce oxidative stress. And as we know, oxidative stress is just free radicals. Um, as seen in this picture, it just goes around, picks them up. And because of that, it can prevent cancer or is claimed to prevent cancer and prevent heart disease and stroke. Uh, the berry is from Central and South America, mostly from the Amazon rainforest, and it's claimed to have antioxidants, but actually it contains a large amount of phytochemicals, and the specific ones are anthocyanins, proanthocyanins, and flavonoids. And phytochemicals are antioxidant-like substances that are in fruits and vegetables that gives them their color. So they just act like um, antioxidants. And it was also found that they contain 19 amino acids and a high amount of unsaturated fat. And while there is not a recommended intake of like antioxidants and phytochemicals, there isn't, there is the recommendation to eat a large variety of fruits and vegetables so that you can get these antioxidants. So this is a breakdown of the um, antioxidants, and I'm a visual person, so it helps me to see it like this. Um, the phytochemicals, again, are just in fruits and vegetables. It gives them their color. Um, the polyphenol is a type of phytochemical, and then the ones that are in acai berries are going to be the flavonoids, anthocyanins, and proanthocyanins. And then on the um, right is just the chemical structure of these compounds. And as you can see, most of them contain um, phenols. So the metabolism of acia berries especially and um, antioxidants is not very well understood and there hasn't been a lot of research on it. Um, but it is believed that they are broken down in the stomach, the small intestine, or the colon, and they're transported um, across by sodium-dependent glucose transporters or lactase pylorazine hydrolase. And once into, um, once across the brush border, it will um, be transported in the portal vein to the liver, where it will either go into circulation or make bile. And when it's in circulation, that's when it's believed to um, have those antioxidant functions of cleaning up the blood and stuff like that. So I wanted to see the scientific research behind the claims. And one study was done on colon cancer cells and um, the phytochemicals in freeze-dried acai berries. Um, the two types of cancers are SW and HT, um, and so they were 
treated, the cells were put in separate um, containers and they were treated with acai berry, acai berry phytochemicals and left to sit for 24 hours. And what they found was that the cancer cells had significant decrease in cell growth, as you can see from the chart. And the cells that did not have cancer did not have, like the cell growth was not affected. And so when they looked into it further, they found that SP proanogenic and NFKB were two factors that were affected by the acai berry um, phytochemicals. And these um, things affect transcription so, and they decrease transcription. So if you don't have the, um, if you have less of this, then you're not going to transcribe as much and then you're not going to make as many cells. So they believe that that was the reason why that that had happened. In a second study, um, leukemia cells were placed, or aca acai berry phytochemicals were placed on leukemia cells, and they were left to sit for 24 hours. And again, after 24 hours, the cancer cells showed a 75% decrease in cell viability. So more, uh, or so there was less growth. And they believed that. Um, they believe that capsaic 3 activity was affected and capsaic 3 is what is in cells that controls the cell cycle and causes death, causes cell death. So as you can see from the graph, the more um, phytochemicals that were given, there was an increase in capsaic 3, meaning that more cells would die. And then um, since it had the claims of um, helping heart disease and stroke, I wanted to find studies on that, but there were not a lot of studies, and the one I did find was done on zebrafish, and they fed zebrafish a diet high in cholesterol, and then they gave them phytochemicals from different sources, like um, acai berries was one, and grapes was, was another, and they fed them this high diet for um, five weeks, and after five weeks, they were given a blood test. And what they found was that the fish that were given the acai berry um, with the high cholesterol diet had the lowest total cholesterol levels and had significant decrease in cholesterol ester transfer protein activity. But they also showed the highest level of triglycerides. So the data was kind of inconclusive and it gave kind of mixed results as to how it could affect heart disease. Um, when I looked at the government regulations, um, I looked at supplements and juice because again, the berry is not sold here. Um, with supplement, as we know, there is little regulation um, from the FDA in fact, they said it's determined by the company and it's up to the company to determine its safety. Um, if there is a problem, the FDA can intervene after it's already been on the, um, or in the market. So people could already be affected by it um, before that they even stopped it. And second is juice. Uh, some of the juices were made in America and some of them were made abroad. And what I found was that uh, in America, we had um, strict sanitation laws and there were um, inspections and the hazards were controlled. But um, if it was made abroad, the sanitation was not um, as big of a concern and they said that they may inspect the facility. So it wasn't a guarantee that it would in fact be inspected. The current research of acai berries are um, its effects are its effect on fertility, um, cognitive function. It's thinking that there might be a um, anti-inflammatory that could help with Alzheimer's, or again, its antioxidant functions. And then there are. Um, more studies going on looking at heart disease and cancer and its effect on that. 
the impact that they have to society, um, since they became so popular, more and more being picked, and so there's less in the rainforest. So they are worried that it might disrupt the balance in the rainforest and it could really like cause damage to it. And also, um, since there are less berries and such a high demand, the price is going to increase. So in conclusion, um, as acai berries are from Central and South America. They do contain phytochemicals, which are um, chemicals, uh, substances in foods and fruits and vegetables that provide antioxidant functions. If um, you are going to buy acai berry products, it's important to look at the product that you're buying and its um, processing location to see what um, side effects there could be or um, just to see how it was made. And as for the health claims, um, the heart disease was kind of inconclusive. There wasn't a lot of research. Um, but as for cancer, it did show a few positive cancer um, benefits, but in the end, most of these were not done in humans and there wasn't a lot of varied research so a more research definitely needs to be done to see their effect and there's my work started. <laughs>